I think the biggest concern is the uncertainty around Brexit. Because clearly, although we've announced, the UK's announced it's leaving, exactly on what terms and what the transition details are, yet to be ironed out. And clearly from the financial sector, given that London is the European Financial Centre, um, it's going to be very difficult for UK institutions to give access to their services around the rest of Europe. Certainly if you're a manufacturer or anything and you sell things, you're going to have taxes and tariffs perhaps. So all that is of some concern. Already from the regulatory point of view, you have to regulate, have to get regulatory approval from your own country and then a college of regulators to make certain changes. Again, it's unclear how that will work going forward because in theory, the college of regulators will disappear. It'll just be your own regulator. But there's lots of things either in progress or in the future going to be happening and that's not clear. I do think in the medium term, the UK will be okay. But it's this next two to three years which could be a real problem. And all that will happen is that UK and Europe by definition will lose out. People will move businesses to the States, they'll move businesses to Asia. You've already seen some exchanges moving contracts out of the UK to the US because of the easier regulatory environment or perhaps let's call it a smoother regulatory environment and that will be detrimental. And unfortunately politics will probably trump practicality and decisions will be made by politicians in continental Europe which could damage the markets and the strength of the European markets in due course. But I think the process is a lot more complicated in Europe um, because you have to start with getting regulatory approval from your own regulator in the UK, that would be the FCA, but also from the College of European Regulators. And I know UK is leaving with Brexit, but at the moment they're not, they're still there. And after Brexit, the rules won't be completely changed. So it's a longer process. You have certain political influences from different countries involved with that. But I think you do have to show, um, first of all, that you have the risk management in place. Uh, certainly the clearing and for an asset like that, whether you'd have a segregated default fund or not would certainly be in consideration. Um, you'd have to show an impact assessment on all aspects of that. You'd have to show is it a retail product, an in, uh, institutional product, how would it work? And really you'd have to show you know, a price history for that asset and how does it clear and settle? And obviously the Bitcoin futures so far, cash settled against an index uh, from a spot exchange or from several spot exchanges. Again, not one unique price source. So there are a lot of questions, and I honestly think if a UK-based exchange tried to do this, it would be a year at least, and certainly with the Brexit complication, probably longer. The biggest problem for Chinese exchanges, which are all government-owned, giving access to foreigners, is always around the currency. The Chinese government always wants to control the flow of currency. And so if they allow people to trade in RMB on, on the mainland and then take their money out, that's RMB in dollars going back and forwards and uh, they think that could be destabilizing given the, the, the size of the markets. However, however, if the Chinese do internationalize and let uh, foreign participation go directly onto the markets, it will have a major, major impact. It will also have a major impact on benchmarks because once certain Chinese prices be start becoming benchmarks for certain assets, that could well change the underlying benchmark reference for the trade in commodities, for example. Um, so the Chinese are quite slow at internationalizing they don't really in the past have understand it. Now I think they have advisors, they've developed their own businesses, they certainly have the scale and the size. Um, but the Chinese authorities have been very careful to dampen down the volatility in Chinese markets, particularly commodities, restricting retail participation to be a much lower level than it was before, where it was as much as 90%. Um, but I think that there's a fear that if you suddenly have foreign traders, particularly um, proprietary traders and others, that that could create volatility at a much bigger scale because the size would be much bigger individuals. Um, but I do think that um, it's potentially a real threat to Western exchanges. If you look at the range of contracts, they're very segmented into certain kinds of commodities on each exchange. They don't compete with each other. Look what happened with uh, the, China, the CFX when they basically were told to kill their futures contract on their index. You know, they basically stopped participating in the index and the index went from being one of the most successful contract launches ever to being pretty much dead. And of course, the concern for a foreign investor looking at the Chinese markets are that Chinese lawmakers and others could come in right and just change things overnight. And you've got money in China. That money could be trapped. The rules could change. There could be severe price movements without the opportunity for you to exit your position, etc. So we're at a very critical stage. They've tried it before. They're launching an international oil contract, I think, on the 25th of this month. Uh, lots of eyes on how well that will do. That certainly had an official nod. 
Um, certainly a lot of Western players are downplaying it. I suppose it's a little bit protecting the turf in some way. Uh, but again, if there's a successful oil contract in China with a benchmark that may be a different benchmark than some of the ones on the Western exchanges, that would be a threat again. So it, it's probably gathered some momentum, but we've kind of seen it before. Let's see what happens.